I uh, am going to be obedient to something I feel the Lord is telling us all to do this morning. The problem that I've experienced with church is that there's just certain things that you don't do in church. But those certain things that you don't do in church are the things that we do every other day in our life. And so I don't like that. I don't like that if I go to church, there's certain things that I shouldn't do. Maybe because to some it seems disrespectful or to some it seems too vulnerable um, but those are the things from my experience that are the things that are most needed in church and so typically after a song like this I'm kind of moved and I'm a blubbering mess but the Lord put something so clear in the, the eyes of my heart for us to do. And so I'm going to ask you if you're comfortable doing that this morning to just go along with it. You know, uh, Jesus always, I, I feel like if he was speaking in today's vernacular, he would always end up saying things like, hey, just go with this, okay? I'm going to spit in the dirt and I'm going to rub it on your face. Just go with this, Okay? Or I know thousands of years of religion says that this is against the law, but I'm going to do it here on the Sabbath anyway, so just go with this. Like, he, he, he operated that way, right? So I'm going to ask you if you're comfortable doing this to first everybody just sit down. And again, I know this is unspiritual to the natural but you see there's another realm operating right now called the supernatural it's always operating and our spirits are sensitive to it Jesus was always aware of it which is why a lot of the things that he asked his followers to do didn't make sense in the natural but because the eyes of his heart were seeing what God was doing in the supernatural. And so now I'm going to ask you to recline your seat as far back as you're comfortable reclining it. If your seat doesn't recline for some reason, maybe it hasn't been used in the year 2020, so just move to the seat next to you and find a seat and just recline as far back as you're comfortable reclining and I know there's people walking into service right now and I'm sorry things are going to look a little weird this morning but when we chose this location really the only reason we chose it was because of the seats the Lord didn't have anything to do with it it was real no I'm just kidding <laughs> I'm just teasing but so here's my point in all this. It's not some sort of cute thing that we're going to do just to make a moment. But why do we get to rest everywhere else but in church? It's it's like why why don't we why don't we get together and eat with each other and share a meal with each other? Because it's such an intimate, personal thing. It's a vulnerable thing. And so we take the Lord's Supper together at church, but heaven forbid we actually go out for lunch after service or, or eat together at, at any other time except for when it seems appropriate. And so I just, I think, I think reclining is a very vulnerable position and especially at church it's a very vulnerable position it's not normal I mean even at church we think of things like well I'll bow I'll bow right or I'll stand and I'll lift my hands in reverence 
But reclining, even though it's just a, it's a naturally vulnerable thing, it's also a posture of not giving anything to the Lord, but simply just resting and receiving. And maybe that's our problem, church, is that we're always so quick to stand up and lift our hands and give and do, right? And maybe not as quick to just lean back into the loving arms of our Savior. And so why not right here and right now? Why not? You know, thankfully, most everybody in here, I guess, just listens to me, so I'm thankful for that. <laughs> but just receive. There don't have to be tears, but maybe there are. You don't have to think about anything, but maybe you are. You don't have to say anything about the Lord, but maybe you want to. But let this be a house of rest. Not just a house of music or a house of outreaches or a a house of preachers and messages and sermons. Let it be a house of rest. Because Jesus had to be alone in the wilderness before he could step into his ministry. He had to step away from the, the crazy of life and, the, and his disciples and the people around him so that he could, he could receive from his Father. So, so maybe this is your moment this week where you just rest. Posture yourself vulnerably before the Lord. I think it's interesting that the Lord went to a paraplegic man who hadn't moved in years. on the Sabbath, the day of rest. And he was so quickly able to heal that man who, whose posture was literally motionless. The man couldn't get up and do something for Jesus. He couldn't go somewhere. He couldn't, he couldn't even posture himself to pray the way he was supposed to. He was just laying there. Laying there on the mat that was his bed, that resting place. And from that posture, the man simply said, yes. <laughs> I believe you can heal me. He didn't say certain prayers or repeat scripture or confessions or didn't take communion. He didn't, he didn't do any of that. He just said, yeah, I believe you can heal me. Is that you? Is that me? Yeah, Lord, I believe you can heal me. I believe you can fix the things that need to be fixed and unravel the things that I've made a mess of. I believe, I believe you can work in my mind deep places that almost seem impossible to work in. I believe you can do that, Lord. or 
a sanctuary. It was when I was on vacation, of course, resting outside in the quiet of the night, sunset. The lake is like glass because that's how Jesus does it. And during one moment, he told me as I was walking down this path to take my sandals off that I was wearing and I wanted to be super spiritual. I say, why, Lord? Is it because I'm standing on holy ground? <laughs> and he's like, no, because I want you to walk quietly. And maybe that's what this is, is we're reclined leaning back so that we're intentionally still intentionally quiet moment of honesty as I was sitting here during worship thinking of this moment I thought of when you sit on a roller coaster and I hate roller coasters <laughs> surprise Heidi's the roller coaster girl I hate roller coasters and it seems like when you're on a roller coaster more you like fight that moment you get done and you're like sore <laughs> so I was thinking to myself yeah it's like when you get on a roller coaster and you have to just kind of sit back and when you sit back then the, the roller coaster takes you somewhere and the Lord takes you somewhere right isn't that why we think I need to rest so that God can move me where I need to be moved I need to lean back so that God can do what God wants to do maybe he just wants us to just rest in his arms, in his loving arms. Just rest in his love without nowhere to be or nothing to do, without, you know, needing and crossing our fingers that something's going to happen next. I feel that pressure sometimes as a guy who's very moved by music and a very demonstrative person. So for me, just to say, just rest with nothing next, nothing to follow, nothing we have to do. That sounds good to me. Maybe you're a parent and your mind is going crazy because you feel like you should be doing something. Isn't there somebody that needs to be fed? Isn't there somebody that needs to be taken care of? Maybe at your job, it's very fast-paced. Take advantage of this moment to just let that habit of rush just break. God does miracles in lifeless things that aren't moving, sometimes that aren't breathing. to Jesus if we're busy running around life. So we stop. We choose to be still this morning, Lord, to step out of traffic, to lean back. His love is patient, first and foremost. He is love and He is patient. He's willing to take the time with us this morning. He's willing to take the time with you. He's not on his way. 
he won't come to the rescue. He's actually here already. And he's been waiting for us. In fact, at this moment, he's in you. He's united with you. mind is racing right now. Just so you, if yours is, you don't feel alone, I'm already thinking to myself, well, people didn't come to church to do this. They came to hear a message. They came to, they came with an expectation. But I'm just releasing my expectations and to be honest, I'm releasing my responsibilities. My responsibilities, church, belong to the Lord. I'm responsible to hear what He's asking us to do. There's somebody in here right now and you feel like you're walking on It's like a platform. It's really thin. It's maybe a foot wide. It's like a plank, <laughs> like the old, you know, the movies, the, the, the pirate ship that has the plank, and you feel like you're walking. And you can see the end of this plank, of this platform. And you know that when you step over, that you'll, you'll fall into what Hollywood says, you know, are the shark-infested waters. But you feel like you can't stop walking. You feel a pressure behind you right now, like you're supposed to keep walking. And you're supposed to keep moving, but you have this fear because this plank is narrow and you're trying to keep your balance. And, and, and you're, you're concerned about the end. You're concerned about what's ahead of you. You're concerned about the future. But yet you feel the pressure to keep walking forward on this plank. You can literally feel the, the texture of the wood, the splinters of the wood on the bottom of your feet because you've been on this plank for a while. And you're, you're afraid of the end of this plank. You're afraid of what comes when you step off. And there's that, again, that pressure. You feel that pressure behind you to keep moving. Pressure as a, as a parent. Uh, maybe it's uh, in your career. You feel this pressure to provide. Maybe, maybe it's for your children. I don't know, but there's a, there's a pressure there. There's a pressure there. And I hear the Lord say to you this morning that as you walk forward on this plank, you are walking into a place that is uncomfortable, but... You do not see what is beyond the end of this plank. You do not see what lies further ahead of you beyond your vision, beyond what your natural eyes can see. So don't resist that pressure. 
because it is me moving you forward into things that may seem uncomfortable and your stress and your anxiety has come from trying to resist something that is unfamiliar to you trying to resist something that causes pressure trying to resist something that is bringing stress to you 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 are fighting against the very thing that I'm using to move you forward and as you move forward you will reach the end of this plank the end of this season and you will be required to step out and you won't see what that next step is and you may even feel like that next step will lead you into fear or pain or something worse than you've already experienced but I say that when I tell you to step out when I tell you to step forward when I tell you to keep walking forward I'm not going to lead you into something you can't handle I'm not going to lead you into something that will scare you to the point where it will hurt you and I know you says the Lord I know you've been hurt in the past I know you've been hurt by those fears you've been scared before and it, and it, and it, it triggers something in you that makes life difficult for you but I have equipped you to continue to walk forward, reach the end of that plank, and step off into this new season. Because you've been lied to. You've been lied to and you think that what lies at the end of this plank will harm you and it will hurt you. You've been lied to though. Because I don't lead you. I don't gently push you forward without leading you into goodness, into something better than what was before. So don't let what was hinder you from stepping forward into what will be. And don't let what was distract the goodness that you can experience in what is. For in this process of moving forward, you are actually moving up into the person that I have called you to be. You're ready, you're ready, you're ready, you're equipped. The Lord gave me this word this morning on the way in. What was that, Lord? Oh, I should have written it down. What was it, Lord? It started with an M. That's all I remember. Anybody getting that word in their heart? It starts with an M. Lord, show us. It had to do with worship. If you're getting a word in your heart and it starts with an M and it has to do with worship, that's not the devil. So speak up. It's for all of us. Magnify. What else? Meditate, manifest through. What else? Majesty. show us motive yeah that's closer like what it's like a musical term almost like like motive like melody no it's not okay mend that was the word mend that he would use this moment with the music as we worship and that's what this is our motivation these melodies this time given to his majesty what was yours Christine Natalie what was yours yeah as we magnify he will mend thoughts that have broken your experience of life and his goodness he will mend the relationships that have broken your experience of life and of his goodness as we magnify his majesty through these melodies he mends he's mending He's mending. He's mending. And that's our motivation, Lord, that you are able to do. 
exceedingly far above what we could ask or imagine even in our wildest dreams that you are able to mend places that have been broken for years that you're able to mend thought processes and habits that we just haven't been able to figure out so why so that we can walk forward on this plank feeling you behind us supporting us moving us forward into our destinies Lord not some sort of overly churchy cliche destiny no the destiny that you have for each one of us the destiny that may not even look like what we thought our destiny was until this moment where you mended our hearts and spoke clearly to us and so together this community we step forward Lord we step forward one step at a time and we see the end of this season coming and instead of being afraid Father we choose I choose this morning, instead of being afraid like I've been, to just to be excited and anticipate that the next step, this next step into the unknown is an exciting step. Yeah, and it, it, is, it is freaking me out, but it's, it's a good thing, God. It's a good thing. Oh, guys, if you only knew, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Oh, the disciples were afraid of that demon-possessed man, but Jesus saw a good thing about to happen. He saw a good thing. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, for what's left of our time here this morning, we thank you that your Holy Spirit continues to flow and move and speak however you want to. We believe that this was the reason, the priority. And so whatever's next, Lord, will just accentuate what you've already been doing. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you that you've met us here, that you've come into our hearts and now are, are working in us and through us and out of us with that overflowing life. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you've got a couple options this morning. If you'd like to stay leaned back, if you're sleeping, continue to sleep. Uh, this is okay. If you want to sit up, uh, you can sit up. Um, I'm just grateful that you were willing to go to that place with us this morning. I feel like it was necessary for me and hopefully for you too. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to just keep moving on with what I feel like the Lord has in store for the rest of service. Amen. Amen. Ooh, yeah. Feel that peace. Just, just hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, we've got um, some things on our hearts that we want to share with you with the remainder of service. And uh, we'll just go with that flow. And uh, I'll have my beautiful wife come on up here and help me out, uh, help, help get me out of this weird moment that I've created for us. Uh, a good moment. Welcome to Living Word Northwest, where every Sunday is weird. <laughs> if it's not a weird Sunday, it must be Saturday. Oh, remember the, the dirt in the eyes, right? And that's, <laughs> he does whatever he wants. We let him. Yeah, hallelujah. Well, um, on behalf of Heidi and myself and um, all of us here uh, at Northwest, we just, we just want to thank you for coming to church. And uh, we're grateful to experience the Lord, experience the Lord with you this morning. Amen. Do we have anybody that's visiting for the first time? Because this might be the last time we see you. Um, is there anybody visiting for the first time? If you wouldn't mind throwing your hand up, or we're not going to call you forward, but we do have a gift that we'd like to give you, a couple free movie theater passes and some information about our campus. So if you're visiting for the first time, throw your hand up and we'll get you that gift. And also, if you want to, you can text the word guest to our number here on the screen, 763-325-1010. And it's our way to just connect with you if you need prayer or if there's something we can do just to, to help out, um, please feel free to text uh, and, and we'll get in touch with you, okay? 
And um, we do want to just let you know, if you didn't, that we are um, one campus of Living Word Christian Center. Our main campus is in Brooklyn Park, and our senior pastors are Mack and Lynn Hammond. And as always, it's an honor to be a part of their family, have that support system just to lean into and that mentorship. Um, it's, it's really helped us through the thick and the thin, so we're grateful for it. Amen? Woo! Hallelujah. Well, let's, let's just keep flying through this stuff. I, uh, there's a couple things that I believe the Lord wants to speak to us um, through His Word this morning. Um, before we get rolling, we'll just take up the offering and give you guys an opportunity to sow some seed into good soil if you choose. Um, and, and I guess I'll just quickly read to you out of Numbers 6, 22, because I think it's going to bless you. And I want you to pay attention to what God is doing for you. God spoke to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the people of Israel. Say to them, God bless you and keep you. God smile on you and gift you. God look you full in the face and make you prosper. In doing so, they will place my name on the people of Israel and I will confirm it by blessing them. Like I told you, I was out with my son, Braven. And everything that I did, Braven wanted to do. He's six years old. What I wore, he wanted to wear. How I packed my tackle box, he wanted to do it. How I made my sandwich, he wanted to do it. Why he bears my name. And all I want to do is just bless that little kid. Amen. And when we realize that God is doing all of these things, God is the one who's causing us to prosper. It's nothing that we do or that we're doing. And even more importantly, that we bear his name. And we just, we look at God and we say, God, I just, I love you. I love who you are. I love the way you do things. And we start doing things the way he does things. It just happens. It's part of our nature. Like Braven is my child. We are his children. And we just, we want to do what he does. Amen. And as he is generous, we become generous. And as he is kind, we become kind. And what's so incredible about our loving Father is He takes it a step further and He confirms His love for us and He confirms His goodness to us by blessing us. So I just want you to know this morning that God is going to do what God wants to do not because of what you do. He's going to do it because He loves you. So any concerns you have about your finances or providing for your family, he's going to do it. He's going to take care of it because you are his child and you bear his name. Not because you tithe, not because you give an offering, but because he loves you. Amen? But see, then we become like God, like brave and just... <laughs> poor kid wants to be like me you know what I mean like because he wants to be like his daddy and we become so easily generous because it's just like our father but you know that feeling that you had towards him that's how the father feels towards us so Amen. thank you Holy Spirit that you help us feel that way towards yes. you and know that's how you feel towards us yes we just we believe that as you so generously you're going to reap abundantly God's too good to not let that happen amen He's done it. So, Father, I thank you for such a generous church, Lord. They've been so generous. Just the fact that we're still here and able to rent this space and, and, and take care of the equipment that you've given us and, and, and provide supplies for, for our kids so they can be ministered to. And all the little things that we take for granted, you've supplied through this incredible congregation. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, God, for their generosity when they, when they volunteer and they come early and set up and, and, and run this equipment and, and lead us in worship and all these amazing things. Minister to our kids, Lord. So generous. Thank you. They're just like you, Lord. They're just like you. I'm thankful to be a part of this mission and this vision and this call to know you more intimately and to expose who you are to more people in this community grateful to be a part of it with this family in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We'll go ahead and pass those buckets. And thank you again. If you want to text to give, you can feel free to do that. Um, you can just text the word give, whatever is easiest for you. Wow. Well, what do you do? All right. You're getting the, uh, no, it's not even going to be a nutshell. I think there's just some specific things that 
the Lord wants us to hear this morning, different than last service um, and beyond what we just experienced. Um, it's nothing, there's nothing I can add to what Jesus just did. You know what I mean, church? Just like there's nothing that needs to be added to that. Um, maybe we just dismiss. Just I can do that. I'm in charge. At least I pretend I'm in charge. But um, <laughs> well, I, I I have in my notes starting out this message: bad bad things happen to everyone, um, which is kind of a Debbie Downer after such an amazing experience like that. But I think what I love about it is that the Lord. The Lord kind of brought us all on the same page for a moment this morning, right? Because you all go home, and when you go to bed, unless you're a vampire, you lay down in your bed, and we all lay down to go to bed, right? Maybe some of us have the fancy beds. We want to get those fancy beds. You know what I mean? So, like, if I'm snoring, she can just... <laughs> but so we had a moment where we all did something that we all do, <laughs> A very human thing, right? Well, here's another very human thing that we all experience. Bad things happen. And as we're preaching and teaching about life and experiencing life, I think we would be ignorant and, in fact, we'd be lying if we just ignored bad things. Because bad things happening are a part of life. Thank you to the four people that aren't lying this morning and said amen to that. <laughs> and for the rest of you, I want to drink whatever Kool-Aid you're drinking. Bad things happen. <laughs> In life. And some of us are fixers like me and we try and fix everything, right? But we would be lying if we said it always worked out. It doesn't always work out. And I want to make something clear that this isn't the exhaustive sermon on how to deal with bad things happening in your life. There isn't one. Amen? I've looked in the Bible to see, of course, what, what does the word have to say about this? And I see guys like Paul who seemed to do everything right when it came to faith and pressing and buffeting his body. But in the end, he died as a martyr, a miserable death. And then I see guys like David who I think I'm a little bit more like at least the constant up and down of the emotions. And one day he's just like victorious. And then the next day he's like, oh God, what have you done to me? Anybody? Right? Right? But that attitude, in the end, he died of natural causes, kind of how I think we all, you know, hope to go one day, just, you know, like in the notebook, in our sleep, you know, like me and you holding hands, babe, side by side, just, uh, right? I don't know. So really, those are our options as Christians. We can be like Paul and press and have faith and just, you know, and then die as a martyr. Or live in the up and down emotional roller coaster that is life and, and maybe die a peaceable death, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sounds like some great options right there. But I just want us to understand that we've been lied to when we think that it's going to be one way or the other. When we think that we're either always supposed to be happy or the secular viewpoint that says life always stinks. It's not one or the other. We will have these experiences on the mountain, and we will have experiences down in the valley. Amen? It's just the way it is, where there's sheer joy, and then when there's sheer misery, right? We will have these experiences of victory and these experiences of defeat. That's the way it will be, and we're going to jump into it because I think it's going to take a weight off your shoulders, even though it sounds really depressing right now. Here's a few examples I thought of to help expound on the idea this morning. It's... It's like finding a hair on your $50 steak while on a date with your spouse. Ups and downs. It's like getting chiggers from the beach while on an unforgettable family vacation. <laughs> Highs and lows. It's having to pay $108 to fill the tank in your sweet Ford F-Series pickup truck. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like the fact that you're... you're Precious young child will one day grow up to be a teenager. Why is this happening? This is the question that God has kind of put on our heart. There's something beneath the surface. Ephesians 6.12 explains it. And I hope, I hope this helps you sigh relief. Because it did this for me. 
Ephesians 6.12, your hand-to-hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms, for they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. It's a battle. And you are Satan's worst enemy. Now, this is funny because I just feel people getting triggered all over this place. You're like, really? Is this one of those word of faith sermon? Oh, I've heard this a hundred times. Stick with me. You're Satan's worst nightmare. Why? Why? Because you were created in the image and likeness of God, and Satan hates God, right? Because God kicked Satan out of heaven and put him down into hell. So he hates anything and anyone that looks like God. Child of God, that's you. That's why bad things happen. Because he hates you. And he wants to make your life miserable. <laughs> right? Ephesians 6.13, though, because of this, you must wear all the armor of God, the armor that God provides, so you're protected as you confront the slander, for you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. <laughs> Of course we say amen to that church, right? right? And then we go through it. And our amen becomes, oh man, Satan tries to work us down in the day to day. To weaken us in the day to day. And, and sometimes it's painful, but it does yield this promise that we will experience victory. And here's the thing, sometimes we experience the victory right here in the now, and sometimes we just have that eternal promise of victory in heaven. Either way, we experience victory. And I want to say this, that everybody's armor, even though we wear the same armor, it looks a little different. And it's important as Christians that we don't judge the way other people's armor looks because of what they've been through. You see, your helmet may be shiny and pretty, church, but mine's full of dents. Why? Because I deal with a lot of stuff with my thoughts. And that's where the enemy hits me the hardest. But you know what I don't deal with? I never question that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't, bo- I don't even like, am I today? Lord, I made this big mistake. I don't deal with that, right? Maybe you do. Just like there's some people that have the hardest time believing for their healing, but yet they're never worried about their finances. On the other hand, there's people that are always worried about their finances, but when they get sick like Heidi, they're like, God's going to heal me, <laughs> right? It's never a problem. So we aren't to judge other people based on how shiny or how banged up their armor is. And that's just a little side note. But, but I, want, I want us to know that, that we've been given these tools. And what's cool about the tools that God gave us, as Paul outlines them, is that they're things like truth and holiness and peace and faith and salvation and the word and prayer. In Jesus' upside-down kingdom, he's not saying that your weapons of warfare and your tools and your armor are your education and, and how much money you make and your title and how much experience you've had and where you stand in the ministry and all these different things have nothing to do with the battle. Ephesians 6.10. We're going to back up a little bit because after Paul gives this incredible sermon and he gets into this armor and this battle and this warfare that we're all in here on this earth, he says, okay, before I tell you anything, I want to make this thing very clear. So this is first and foremost, right? He says, I've saved these most important truths. <laughs> he says, be supernaturally infused with strength. How? Through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you first and foremost. Why is this happening to me? Why are these bad things happening to me? What am I supposed to do? How do I fix it? First and foremost, Jesus. A life union with Jesus. He says this more than peace, more than prayer, more than this truth and this righteousness and these things, right, that we're supposed to put on. He says Jesus, His way, His truth, His life, infusing us with strength. I don't care how much armor the warrior wears. If he's not strong, he can't carry it. David said, I can't wear that armor. It doesn't fit. I can't do what I'm called to do wearing someone else's armor. I'm not saying don't put on like the helmet of salvation, church. I'm not saying that, okay? 
I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that Jesus has infused you with something in here in the moments for when your faith is weak or when you're like, God, am I saved after what I just did? I can't believe I just did that. Or you know what? I'm not walking in peace right now. He's giving you something on the inside. He's infused you with his life so that in the moments of weakness, weakness and dents and dings, you have the ability to continue forward down that plank, <laughs> right, down the unknown into what he's called you to do even in the times when it seems like everybody is against you. And this is the thing I want you to know is that the battle for your soul never stops. No matter how much you go to church, no matter how much you read your Bible, no matter how good you are, the battle for your soul never stops. And the good news is that Jesus is right there with you, though, because he owns that. He, <laughs> your soul is more important to him than his very own life. He gave his life for your soul, amen, so that he could be with you. So I guess on the contrary, we could say that there's no mistake that you've made or thought that you could think, right, no matter what's gone on in your past or what you're planning to do in your future, you can know this, that the battle for your soul never stops. The battle is the Lord's. And I know it seems a little ambiguous and kind of a little unfinished. Um, it reminds me of, you know, hearing these words reminds me of, you guys have seen the, the show Loki where it's like there's good guys and bad guys and, you know, demonic spirits and, uh, right? It, it's like, but in all reality, Hollywood's kind of got a taste of what the Christian life, what's really going on. You know, and I hate to say it, like, uh, 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 we can't just uh, wash away the idea that there is a, an enemy of our soul that's out to kill and steal and destroy us. So the, the cool thing is, is that unlike Loki, there's like, there's not a cliffhanger to our story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh... I, I wrote it down like this. Ephesians 6.13 gives us the spoiler alert, right? And it's not a how, like how did this happen? How did this bad thing happen? It's not a when. Like when will this end? Our answer is a what. What's going to happen? Ephesians 6.13, that second half, you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Amen? Amen? Abe, did you want to add some things to this? Is that okay? Should I? No. Um, so what I was going to say, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> babe, you, the only time she asks me that question is when we're in church. Like, you, babe, you no. <laughs> interrupt me anytime. <laughs> no. Well, it, it's, I just, I want to talk about how difficulties are not only a part of our life, but with the Lord, they can be something that is delightful. <laughs> and that's only because of him. And that's something that we have. It's like a secret we have that other people who don't know the Lord don't know Yeah, that these difficulties can be something that is delightful. I, I have to explain this because I had to do it for first service. And especially if you're visiting, this is basically our personalities on display. <laughs> and when I'm sick, I am the biggest baby laying in bed and I feel like, and this is just it's like true. the common cold. I feel like Jesus has forsaken me <laughs> and that I might die from this cold at this moment where then, and that's kind of how I preach, sorry. And then Heidi steps in, you know what I mean? And she's just like so positive and encouraging and Aww. it's awesome. So this is why we need each other and why you guys need both of us up here. Yeah. It's having the hope that anchors our soul, right, while we're sinking. And that's, Babe, that's you are the hope that anchors happen. my soul. <laughs> we cannot rise victorious um, if we are stuck and right. weighted down in asking the Lord over and over again, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why did this happen? It's Instead, true. we can ask the Lord, who are you yeah. in this situation? Yeah, it's good. This gets our focus on him, it renews and transforms our minds to think and see and respond right. like Jesus does. Yeah, that's good. Right? Yeah, that's good. Well, how do we live victoriously like Jesus does? 
What if we viewed difficulties as opportunities to experience deeper measures of his grace, of his strength, of his power, as opportunities to draw closer to the Lord, so like a tree deepening our roots in yeah. his love, so that we can rise and grow higher into new levels and perspectives right. with him. Yeah, it's easier said than done. Right. But that word perspective is a big one for me too, yeah. Help me just change my perspective to see where you see, even though I'm not yes. feeling maybe yes. what I feel like I should be feeling. It's good. It's, it's impossible to grow without difficult people. <laughs> it's impossible to grow without difficult situations, challenges, utter failures, and mistakes, right? <laughs> Love that's grows. What, that's what marriage is for. <laughs> love grows when we choose to love someone who is so rude. Not when we choose to <laughs> this love. This seems really personal. <laughs> you didn't say that last service. Wow. Not, not when we choose to love someone who just agrees with everything that we say oh, and who okay. is so easy to love. We know that's not me. So Peace grows. When we choose it in the midst of a storm. Yeah, it's true. Not when we're lying on a hammock by the beach. Right, right. Hmm. Unforgettable lessons are learned through failures and mistakes, not when we get it all right. Right. Forgiveness grows in us when we do something so awful and terrible. Mm -hmm. And Jesus opens up his arms and he says, I forgive you. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we think difficulties make us depressed, anxious, worried, fearful, insecure, weak. But all they do is they expose what is already inside of us. Right, right. And the Lord is so happy and delighted to take those things inside of us and use them to heal us, to strengthen us, to grow us. Yeah. If we ask him, just right. ask. Right. Right. <laughs> we say, Lord, show me the gold in that difficult person <laughs> and that difficult relationship. Yeah. Show me where your treasure is when troubles are literally surrounding every side of me. <laughs> that's a different kind of prayer than just fix it, fix it, please fix yes. it. You know, it's, yes. it's, a hard, it's a harder prayer to pray. Yeah. It's, it's on your knees kind of crying, where is the joy in this trial, <laughs> right? Yeah. And he will answer. Yeah, he will. It's, it's asking him, you know, give, give me wisdom in this waiting. Give me, give me hope in this weariness. Lord, show me what you see so that I can respond and live like you. Because what happens is every time that we respond like Jesus does, we grow to become like Jesus. Yeah. So listen, instead of running away from our enemies' difficulties and uncomfortable situations to find the easier way, which is so natural and human, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Can we just choose his way? Yeah, and think about how this affects our relationships. I mean, I'm even just thinking with our staff. You know, we've got a core team of staff, and this is this just jumped in my heart. It's easier for our staff to to just like, and, and you know what? This goes for a lot of Christians that, that I've experienced in my life, especially in the ministry. It's easier to just kind of like shove down the the struggle or the stress or the, the discontent or something somebody said or done and just like ignore it and try and just move on from it because it's, you know, we're not going to let in strife and we're not going to let in division. So I'm just going to, as opposed to like confronting it, you know what I mean? And saying, and, and saying, because I love you. Yeah. And because I want the Lord to work something out on a deeper level, let's, let's go there. Yeah. You know, even whether any relationship, whether it's a marriage, you know, whatever it is, like saying we need to go there yeah. because we're, what we're doing is saying, okay, Lord, we need, we need to bring you into this. Mm -hmm. Show us how to learn and grow, you know, not just like, well, I love you, brother and sister in the Lord, and praise God, let's get back to the ministry. You know what I mean? Like, like. We need, to, we need to bring that stuff to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Become like Him in it, yeah. Yes, right. And 
his way is, is not running away from the enemies. What is his way? His way is resting at a table in yeah. the midst of our enemies. <laughs> right, right. His way yeah. is, is sleeping in the midst of a storm. Right. Right. His way is seeing difficulties as a key that opens a door into a place where we can literally be enveloped in his grace, his strength, his power, his love. I want that. Yeah, yeah. Because those difficulties will never go away. Right, right. <laughs> and they may never change. And people around us may never change. But right. guess what? We get to change. Yeah. We get to grow. And we get to transform. And we get to be like him. Grow to become who he has created us to be. To see things how he sees them. Yeah, right. Right? Because... You know, this, this, what happens is when we do that, it connects us to him. This is what we take with us to heaven. Mm. Remember, this life is just a wisp, right? Yeah. Like what we were talking about in the women's group last Thursday. Yeah, yeah. It's so quick. These are the things that we take with us to heaven. So we can either face all of those, those things that are exposed inside of us through difficulties. We can face them now. Or we'll just have to face them later. <laughs> Either way, it's his goodness and his, his mercy. That is, ch he's chasing after us with his goodness because right. we face them later, right? Mm -hmm. He wants us to have these things come to the surface so that he can deal with them because he doesn't want us to walk with them. He wants us to overcome them. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's true. It's a good point. Hmm. Um. His, his goodness is, is acknowledging, right, every good and beautiful gift that he gives us every single day, but also know that in those gifts that he gives us every day is growth. Mm. They're growth gifts. Yeah. All of creation, from the insects to the plants to the trees to the animals to the humans, <laughs> Everybody is continually growing every day, little by little. And that is a part of life, and it is a good thing. Yeah. And in his goodness, when these things are exposed in us, this is where our opportunity lies, where our choice lies. We get to make that decision when these things come up to say, oh, I'm going to lean back into your arms like that song, like this morning. I'm going to rest and relax in your arms. I'm going to give you these things, Lord. And then what he does is he reveals who he is. And it's usually wrapped in his overwhelming love and how much he loves us and how, how all the good things that he sees in us and all the things that he has for us. He's not focused on all these things that we get focused on. Right, right. And then he gives us what we need. Is it truth, confidence, wisdom, revelation, peace? Maybe it's comfort. Maybe it's hope. Maybe you need joy. Well, he is a source of all those things. Right. And every time we reach for him and receive from him, we become like him. And we give that life to others. Yeah. It's like a tree, right? Trees naturally reach for the light. Yeah. They receive that sunshine. They give oxygen, life to others around them. Mm. And that's why Jesus says, look at the birds, look at the lilies, because there's revelation in his creation. Yeah. So I'll finish with this. When Paul said to the Lord, please, oh please, oh please, take away this difficulty from me. It's like a thorn in my flesh. Yeah, he didn't have any kids, did he? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, well, I don't. <laughs> and instead, the Lord scooted his chair up to a table with his enemies. Wow, wow. And then he gave him an abundance of of grace and abundance of power and abundance of love and abundance of strength. And most importantly, he gave him a deeper awareness of Jesus with him. 
all these things he didn't have before. So see it as something that is good because we have him. Yeah. And the Lord said to Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, my grace is always more than enough for you. And my power finds its full expression through your weakness. Paul said, so I will celebrate my weakness. (laughs) For when I'm weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. So I'm not defeated by my weakness, but delighted. For when I feel my weakness and endure mistreatment, when I'm surrounded with troubles on every side and face persecution, that's the difficult people. Because of my love for Christ, I am made yet stronger. For my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. And I know that we can't always say that right away when we're going through difficulty, and that's okay. Mm. That's where we just say, maybe we just cry, (laughs) and we just rest in the Lord until we can say, okay, this is going to be okay, right? Yeah, that's good. The Lord uh, showed us this during the last service. And I think it's for all of us today um, in Ephesians 6.13 where it says you're destined for all things and will rise victorious. Um, I think for us it's just let's look at today, mm-hmm. right? Not, not like I tend to do, which is look all the way to the very end and try and plan the path out, you know, maybe plan the path of least resistance and how can I step on the least amount of toes and how can I make sure that everything is going to work out and right but just for today you are destined for all things today and will rise victorious today one step at a time down the path of peace for today let's all stand together if we can lord today we thank you that what you are accomplishing is for today, and we choose to not concern ourselves with what might happen tomorrow. But Lord, together, we thank you that through you, through you in us, we have the victory. We rise victorious. We rise victorious today. So what does that mean? For me, in a struggle that I had in my life with anxiety, it was today I, today I, was, I was one step closer today. I didn't deal with anxiety. I, didn't, I, I had one less panic attack, right? It was one thing at a time for me. That's the way it was. And then that turned into two days without one and then three days without one, and that, right? Just one, maybe with, with, with somebody in your family. Maybe you've got a, a teenager that you're like, today was one good day. And maybe we'll have two in a row. And maybe we'll have three in a row. You know what I'm saying? Like victorious today. So whatever that is for you, whether it's an internal battle or that kind of thorn in the flesh battle like Heidi was talking about. Maybe you're married to your thorn in the flesh. I don't know what it is. But that whatever that is, today you will rise victorious. And tomorrow he will give you all things necessary for life. And godliness, amen, he puts that yoke right next, he gets up under it with you, and Jesus is is like, okay, today, here we go, let's do this together, amen. I hope you are encouraged today with that fact that you will rise victorious today and tomorrow, he'll he'll let you know this is what we're going to do tomorrow, amen, and this is is how we're going to take one step forward tomorrow, hallelujah. Wow, well, it's really weird without like music and stuff, it's a lot less emotional, so I hope you're encouraged. (laughs) Come on, church. He's for you. He's not against you. Amen. Amen. We're just so grateful to have experienced the presence of the Lord with you in that unique way this morning. Um, And uh, I hope it just sets a pace of of rest and leaning back this week for you. Amen. And as we do that, I just see us rising forward just one step, one step, one step. Amen. Amen.